Have you ever picked up a hitchhiker? My husband and I were leaving the grocery store and witnessed a big dramatic mulch theft. Yes. Someone grabbed a bag of mulch, tossed it in their jeep and sped off. Tires squealing. Jumping curbs. It was confusing and hilarious. The high school clerks were mostly indifferent, but there were a couple employees freaking out and running after the jeep. Then we turn around and there is this girl standing there with her jaw hanging open and holding a box of donuts. She just looks at us and says demands I need a ride. I don't know why he just did that. That's my cousin. The employees who were freaking out kind of turn and start coming toward her now that the jeep is gone. So we were like up, uh, okay let's go. She lived like 2 miles away in the mobile home park. Sure enough the jeep was parked in the drive. For some reason her cousin just totally ditched her for a $4 bag of mulch. Disregard women. Acquire gardening supplies. I once picked up my, what I now know to be my uncle, on a street. After some good conversation, and a joint between us, we realized that we were family. Distant uncle then, not so much now. That is the sweetest hitchhiker story I've ever heard. Major props to you and your determination to help this guy. I've picked up plenty of hitchhikers in my life. One I remember was a 28-ish year old guy who was trying to get to Madison to be a test subject for a new ADD medication. Apparently they lock you up for a couple months, regulate your diet and exercise, then give you a few grand and set you free. You know, if the meds they're testing don't kill you. Anyway, I got him another 50 miles down the road before I had to turn south. He was nice though. This past June, right before our wedding, my, now ex, husband picked up three crusty kids and their dog. They were hitching their way to a rainbow gathering, so he brought them home to me. We fed them and packed them goodie bags full of aspirin and hand sanitizer, along with 10 pounds of dog food, then drove them to the next state. They were a nice bunch of kids. I've also not picked up hitchhikers who I thought were suspect, but I usually go to the nearest gas station and put together a bag of water, Gatorade and granola bars and bring it to them. Even if I think they look creepy, I still don't want them to go hungry. I also had to hitchhike when I hit a deer in Jasper and was 200 miles from civilization. It was minus 30 out and I had no signal. Luckily a family stopped and drove me 200 miles to town. Otherwise I surely would have died overnight. The guy turned out to be a Mountie. The heater core died on my Honda while I was 200 plus me from home. The car still ran but my toes went numb after 30 minutes. I eventually made it home but I now keep packs of hand warmers and two blankets in my trunk. Frick if I'm going to get stranded in freezing weather ever again. When I was 12 or 13 my dad and I were on our way home from somewhere a few hours away and he decided it would be a good idea to pick up the hitchhiker on the side of the interstate holding a cardboard sign with the name of our town on it. As soon as we picked him up it was obvious that he was homeless. He smelled terribly and when asked him where he lived he asked just to be dropped off downtown. His name was Steps. He turned out to be very nice and down to earth. He told us about hitchhiking all over the country and what he had seen. Before we dropped him off we bought him some McDonald's and then never saw him again. My dad's first words when he got out of the car were, Don't tell your mother about this. Don't tell your mother about this. It's not really a good dad story unless these words are spoken. My father was working nights at an airport and I was his transportation back and forth. One night he calls me to show up early. As I pull up, my father is standing next to a small man with several boxes. My father instructs me to load up the boxes. They are cold and wet. The man gets inside and my father tells me to drive to downtown. It was a quiet ride. We get near downtown and my father directs me towards the Greyhound bus station. I help unload the boxes and I wander around as my father talks a little bit with the man. Eventually, the man boards a bus and my father comes back to the car with one of the boxes. I ask who's that and what's in the boxes and my father just smiled. We eventually get home and he brings in the box. My mother joins us as we await for my father's revelation. We all look over his shoulder as he pulls out. Fish, frozen salmon, to be specific. Apparently, the man was a fisherman that had been working in Alaska. He had saved up to transport himself and his cargo, but couldn't complete his goal of selling off some of his fish to get enough for cab fare to downtown. My father, always a generous man, 
had offered to give the man a ride for free, as a thank you for the ride, and for even giving him the time of day to ask if he needed anything. He gave my father a giant box of frozen salmon. We ate salmon for a while. TL. DR. Pick up hitchhiker equals free fish. So long, and thanks for all the fish. I was dropping a friend off at the airport, and some middle aged guy with luggage came up to my car and asked for money for a taxi to where his hotel was. He kind of didn't know the city's geography, and a taxi would have cost around $80. He didn't look too happy when I told him that, and explained that he had just flown in from a job interview in Detroit, and was in town for another job interview the following day. After hemming and hawing, I let him jump in, and drove him the 40 miles to his hotel. He was apparently an engineer, who I kid you not, worked on rockets, the space shuttle, and other various flying things. He said he was on his last, and these job interviews were the last bit of hope for him. We just talked the whole time about his previous jobs, and various 3D rendering software technology. It was my first time picking up a hitchhiker, and he wasn't creepy at all. TLDR. Picked up a hitchhiker. Didn't even get a handy. I picked a guy up one time who started out being friendly. He then made some joke about stabbing me with this strange laugh. Like it was a joke but not really. I told him to get out. I pick people up all the time. For some reason most Americans expect every stranger in the world to be a cold blooded murderer. I've met some decent people this way. I personally don't pick up hitchhikers. Probably because a family friend picked up a female hitchhiker who ended up murdering him by stabbing him multiple times. She ended up having severe mental problems. I'm sure the majority of hitchhikers are nice normal people, but since I've been pretty close to the worst case scenario, I just don't do that gamble. I live in Japan and I once picked up two guys hitchking. They had come from Okinawa, at the very southern end, hitched all the way up to Hokkaido and were now hitching back. When I dropped them off they gave me a candy bar, and we posed for photos because they were collecting pictures of everyone who gave them lifts along the way. This was kinda a pay it forward thing for me, because in Australia our Japanese exchange student got lost one time and some random guy picked him up and drove him to our house, dropped him off and drove off again without ever saying anything. This kid spoke no English either. My roommate, a straight laced, straight A girl, and I were at the college grocery one night at about 1am buying foodstuffs, when a very skinny woman approached me. She said, she and her husband had their car repossessed in the lot, and will I give them a ride to their apartment, about 3 miles away. So, I tell them, sure, let me finish up, and I'll give them a ride. My roommate was having none of it, and was very upset. I told her, it's okay, crap happens to people, sometimes you should just be nice. So, we finish at the checkout, get the bags and the people, go to my car, and drive them to the apartment. They get out, no harm done. About 2 weeks later, I'm back at the grocery with my roommate, and the same woman with a different man comes up. Same story, car repossessed, etc. I tell them, sure I'll give you a ride, just don't lie, he's not your husband, you used this line on me a couple of weeks ago, I don't know what he is, and I don't want to know, but sure I'll do it, she was taken aback, and seemed surprised, but accepts anyway, again, roommate is P, again no incidents, I suspect the woman was a prostitute, and these were her johns, but who am I to judge, as long as they don't hurt anyone, I don't care. For the past year I've tried to pull over when I see someone buy an broken down car. I don't drive much, but I've probably pulled over about 15 times. This past summer I was on my way back to school and saw a guy who was sitting in his car on the side of the road so I pull over to see if he needs any help. He was broken down, had no phone, and was 2 hours from his home so I'll let him use my phone to call whoever he needed. I've always thought that I wouldn't pick up a hitchhiker because, well... I don't know what would happen, but after he got off the phone I asked if he needed anything else and he asked for a ride to the nearest gas station, 20 minutes away. I didn't even think about it and told him to get in the car. If I had thought before answering I doubt I would have offered, but I gave him a ride and no trouble came to me. I felt terrible for the guy. He was 25 and was already divorced and lived 3 hours from his kids. 
So ever other weekend he drove 3 hours in his early 90s piece of crap car to see his kids. I knew he hated his life except for his kids, good god I could tell he loved his kids. I can only hope that someday I'm as loving of a father as he is. Now that's a father right there, whoever he is, I hope things work out for him. First time I offered a person a ride was when this big girl was sobbing her eyes outside a city bank I go to regularly. She was surrounded by a lot of adults and seeing it that I was the youngest and didn't have any job duties, I volunteered to drive this young lady home. So she sat in my car still crying and saying I don't want to get hurt anymore repeatedly. I'm not the best person to cheer someone up but I managed to say it'll be alright. So as I drove her back to her place, she started opening up and saying bits and pieces of what happened. From what I understood, she was 26 years old, got pregnant in high school at 16. Her parents disowned her, she's pregnant again hence the big part, and her boyfriend is now leaving her. At this point, she was really comfortable about telling me her life story, and she asked if I could drive around some more or stop by a park so we can talk. Being the nice guy, I said sure, and then she asked another favor, to buy her a pack of smokes and a few drinks. I was 20 at the time, and then she asked me to drive her to a cell phone company, forgot the company's name, to add more minutes to her temporary phone. By this time, I felt like her bee. Anyways, I said I had to go back for dinner because it was getting late and she sorta hinted that she didn't want me to go. LOL. I insisted and I finally drove her back to her place. Then this Mexican guy comes out of the apartments who I believe to be her boyfriend. And she says to be oh crap, he is going to kill you. But yeah I didn't care and he came up to my car. She got out, they hugged, and he looked at me and said thanks. My first time giving someone a ride. FML. Second time I offered someone a ride was because I was over generous. I work out late at the 24 hour fitness gym, usually around 2-3 am. I saw this guy leave at the same time as I was, but he was carrying a suitcase. So I shouted at him because he was pretty far in the parking lot do you need a ride now? He turned around immediately and headed straight for me. I felt a little happy thinking I was going to help someone out tonight. He came up to my face and said are you gay? You shouldn't be asking people if they need rides. And he walked away. There's more stories but these first two are probably the most memorable. Thanks for what you did. A lady did the same for me and it meant a ton of the time. Still think about her a lot. She picked me up on one of the worst nights of my life. Also the night before my birthday. I was in bad shape in a different county and it was February. She even took me to her place. Fed me. Let me clean up. Gave me a jacket. And smoked W me till way early in the morning. She was awesome. I was more afraid of her than she was of me I think. Haha. <laughs> I think you just have to be smart. She said I looked like I needed help and didn't seem like a threat so she just picked me up. As often as I can. I work at a ski resort and pick up people hitching up the road a couple of times per week. Hitching karma is more useful than reddit karma. Spoke with a tourist I met here in Australia, and he was telling me of two backpackers who decided to travel up north separately, but by hitchhiking, they would be picked up by random cars and trucks, and sometimes one would progress hundreds of kilometers ahead of the other, while at other times they discovered they were in the same town. There was even an instance where one had been given a ride in a semi-trailer, and found his friend walking along a remote highway, reunited. It seems like complete madness to hitchhike in Australia, especially given how remote everything can be. Although, they tend to be a lot of Europeans, so I'm assuming they have no grasp of just how far apart everything is here. Sorry pal, the next town is 500 kilometers away, not an afternoon bike ride. I picked up a hitchhiker on his way to his sister's wedding. I got some wedding cake out of it, the bride treated me like a hero. I was in the car with my brother when we picked up a hitchhiker, his name was Cameron, was trying to get to the local bus stop to get on a bus to see his girlfriend, I think he was 18 or so, no complications whatsoever, it was a 5 minute car ride, we just made some small talk, after we dropped him off, my brother said to him have a nice life, I thought it was funny at the time, but then I realized that I was never going to see that guy in my life again which is still a ridiculous idea to me whenever I think of it. Sorry mine isn't as interesting as some others. 
This was one of the ones that touched me most, actually. I used to give rides but I have since stopped after one crazy encounter. I picked up this young white dude who was probably around 20-25 on the outskirts of Memphis heading south. I was on my way home from work so it was late in the afternoon. I typically stopped on the way home and got a six pack. From time to time I'd crack open a cold one for the ride since it was the better part of an hour. The young man said he had been hitching since California and was on his way to his sisters in Florida with a job lined up at Disney. I asked him how his journey had been thus far to which he started in on why he left California. This is also when I realized this dude was bad crap crazy and I needed to drop him off sooner rather than later. He tells me how his wife cheated on him with a lawyer and eventually left and divorced him for said lawyer. After the wife lawyer team cleaned him out he decided to get the frick out of California as the lawyer was using his connections to try and get dude thrown in jail. Then he described how the lawyer had hired private eyes and other non-savory types to try and entrap him as he crossed the country. He even said a one man whirly bird had followed him across most of Arkansas and he had to travel at night to avoid being spotted by it. The further he got into the story the more agitated he seemed to become. It was troubling to say the least. I always carried a pistol in my truck and it was easily within reach but I figured my best bet to avoid being stabbed by this dude was to out crazy him. I cracked open a brew, offered him one and started with my story I was making up as I went. I told him I knew how he must feel having been cheated on. I went on that I'd been out of the joint for about 6 months and was adjusting well. He asked me what I was in for and I told him I'd gotten really drunk. Blacked out and when I came to I had went crazy with a box cutter on my ex and the dude she was cheating on me with. He got really quiet and didn't really say anything else until we got to my town. I dropped him off at the truck stop near the interstate and never saw him again. TL. DR. Out crazy da hitchhiker and most likely won't be picking up another one. I have. I picked up a guy down in Dayton and drove him 30 miles north. He smelled funny but was nice. He was telling me about this driver in Tennessee who purposely hit him with their car. He had a huge gash on his arm it looked gnarly. As chance would have it I had recently got a piercing so I had a tube of neosporin with me it wasn't much but I gave it to him when I dropped him off. I was a tad nervous picking up an older male hitchhiker since I am a female and at the time I was maybe 19 but I am glad I did it. When I was younger my mom brought home two hitchhikers and they stayed with us for a few days. So maybe it's genetic. When I worked up in Yellowstone National Park many of the other employees used hitchhiking as their main mode of transportation. I brought my truck up with me so I never had to stick my thumb out, but picked up those who did every chance I got. I picked up some guy by my school once who needed a ride to his apartment about 10-15 minutes away. Not really as cool a story as yours, but he needed to get back to his apartment because his brother's kids were being dropped off there by a bus and he would have missed them otherwise. He ended up talking to me about how DNA is like a programming language. I'm a software engineering major, and like all programming languages someone needs to give it meaning for it to do anything. That's why he believed in God. Someone had to give DNA meaning, or else it wouldn't do anything at all. I thought it was a pretty interesting concept, though I still don't believe in God. Haha <laughs> yeah, that's why I believe in compilers and Drina. I doubt anyone will read this but here it goes. A couple of years ago I was catching a bus to go home from my last class of the day and I got off to switch buses at a station. I see this man with graying hair looking around obviously lost. He was carrying a clear plastic bag with something wet inside. Upon closer inspection I notice that he's pretty dirty and wearing some sandals that are very common in rural Mexico. He has graying hair he notices me looking at him and figured I spoke Spanish too. Which was true. He told me that he had recently crossed the border and had been traveling in a van that was to drop him off in Yakima, Washington. Apparently his family couldn't pay the toll in time and the driver kicked him out in Tacoma, where we were, without telling him where he was or anything. Apparently they would have probably killed him but it was daytime so they just left him stranded. I was expecting him to just ask me for money but instead he asked me to tell him how to get to the Greyhound so he could get to Yakima. If not he wanted to know how to get to Seattle to stay in a shelter someone else told him about earlier. I explained to him that if he waited for a minute I would find out and tell him. I tried calling several people to see where he could stay that was in town and not too far. 
I also tried to figure out where the greyhound was. Eventually I ended up giving him directions on how to catch a bus to Seattle because that was what he decided to do. I tried to give him about $15 for food and he would not take them. I even offered him a room in my house for the night so he could shower and change clothes. Maybe try to contact his family in Yakima. He said he had worked for everything in his life and couldn't take things for free. So I wrote a note in English explaining that he was on his way to Seattle and that he did not speak English. I even wrote my number on it so if he got lost or stranded again he could call me. I kept wishing that I had a car so I could give him a ride to where he might catch a bus to Yakima. I never heard from him again but I hope that he made it to where he was going. I read it. I have given two different strangers rides. The first was a homeless man that had a bag full of empties and was trying to get to the store but his bag ripped a mile from his destination. The second was a guy that tried to sell me some crack and pot outside a bar. I gave him a ride back to his house on the outskirts of town. I actually had really great conversations with both of these guys. Mostly about their criminal pasts and the downward cyclic spiral that the justice system forces them into. I'm going into forensics so we actually had really constructive talks. First time I picked up hitchhikers was when I was in Banff on a court and decided to go skiing. I had reserved a small rental car, but ended up with a Dodge Charger that looked like a hearse. On my way back to town from the hill I saw a couple of kids with snowboards in their gear. Offered them a ride and they were dumbfounded, readying themselves to walk quite a ways carrying their boards. They told me that they always walk because nobody ever stops for them with their boards. By chance I had this massive rental car and lots of time to kill. The look of stunned appreciation from people not expecting a favor is awesome. I have a buddy who used to drive trucks across Texas. One day while leaving Austin, he picked up a little squarely looking black dude who said he was going 90 miles north. About 5 minutes into the ride, the little squirrely guy goes you ever had a boy suck your dong? My buddy and I picked up a hitchhiker on the way back from White Sands Missile Range. We'd brought pizza for his co-workers who were on guard there. On the way back, this guy flags us down. Tells us his car is busted. So we pick him up and drive him into town. That's when he tells us he left his wife and infant child in the car. Don and I look at each other, knowing this is a bad stretch of road, but we're in the wrong lane and we're too far to turn around anyway. We end up getting his tools, driving back, figuring out we can't get the car to go on its own. Don puts them up for a couple of days while their car gets fixed, because that's the heck of a guy that he is, and they get back on the road at that point. I think they were grad students at NMSU or something. I was waiting for Wesley Snipes to be a drag queen. Good story. One night I got off work pretty late, probably around midnight. I lived in a not great part of a not great town, but this area was commercial and not bad. I saw a waitress walking across the road, much older than me, and she looked so tired. I could totally empathize because I felt exactly that tired as well. So I rolled up to her and asked if she needed a ride. She briefly sized me up and got in. After we settled where she was headed, she told me, you shouldn't pick up strangers. I replied to her, you shouldn't take rides from them either, and that was all we said for the rest of the ride. Probably 10-15 minutes. Yes, terrible idea. I was driving back into town one day and see this car on the side of the road about 30 minutes out. A little bit later I see this guy in a business suit carrying a duffel bag. So I slowed down cause I figured I was close and it's just some dude whose car ran out of gas a little too soon. Anyway, I pull over, he throws his bag in the back of my car, and I'm like hey, where you headed he just glares at me and says, just take me into town. So I was a little nervous and pretty annoyed. Then for some dumb reason I asked him what he had in the bag and he said none of your freaking business, so the whole rest of the drive I'm just thinking this can't be real. Thank god it was still light out, I was getting more and more nervous. We get into town. I stop at the first gas station cause I want him out of there as soon as possible at this point, and I drive away and make it home alive. Then later I go out to get my crap out of my car and realize the guy left his frickin' bag. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.